Hello everyone. This is the third video in the series on converting a G0704 milling machine to CNC. In this episode, I will be disassembling the X-axis, which includes the table and the X-axis lead screw. I start by removing the rubber sheet, which is the Y-axis weight cover. There are two cap screws holding the Y-axis weight cover and weight cover bracket to the saddle. The other end of the Y-axis weight cover was removed when I disassembled the Z-axis. I start the X-axis disassembly by removing the hand wheels at each end of the table. Again, removing a single nut in the center of the hand wheel allows the hand wheel to slide off the shaft. I also remove the two black cap screws in the X-axis lead screw bracket. The X-axis lead screw bracket requires some persuasion to remove it due to the indexing pins. Some firm hits from a soft mallet gets it started. I didn't notice the shaft key when I removed the hand wheel because it was rotated to the bottom. It prevented the X-axis lead screw bracket from sliding off the shaft. The key was seated firmly in the slot. Fortunately, I have a specialized tool designed specifically for removing keys. It looks very similar to diagonal cutting pliers, but as far as you know, it's a specialized tool. With the key removed from the shaft, the outer thrust bearing is accessible. The lead screw bracket was removed without further complication, and the inner and outer thrust bearings came with it. Here's a clear view under the table now that the lead screw bracket has been removed. Here's a shot of the indexing pins in the lead screw bracket, along with the inner and outer thrust bearings. And now I just repeat the same procedure for the other end of the table. The difference here is, the lead screw bracket on the left side of the table only has a thrust bearing on the outside. Notice the indexing pin sticking up out of the bracket. That pin had a loose fit in the hole and actually fell out on its own. With both lead screw brackets removed, the table can now slide freely. It won't slide off of the saddle, however. Until the table stop block is removed, it's shown here held in place by two cap screws. Next up, I remove the X-axis gib. Remove the gib adjustment screw and slide the gib out. I've heard it mentioned that the gibs should be labeled so as not to mix them up. I didn't bother doing this, however, because the X-axis and Y-axis gibs have two different part numbers and the Z-axis gib is much longer than the X and the Y. The gibs are tapered with a thicker end and a thinner end. Here's a picture of the X and Y gibs showing you the thick end of both. The gibs simply won't fit into the wrong axis, at least on my machine. Now, with the table stop block removed and the Z-axis gib removed, I was free to slide the table off of the saddle. Here's the table flipped upside down sitting next to the x-axis lead screw which is still bolted into the saddle. In this picture of the x-axis lead screw nut, you can see the two cap screws that are used for backlash adjustment. My mill had about 20 thousandths of an inch of backlash in the x and the y axis. I never did bother to search out the cause and sort it out. Here in the saddle you can see the two cap screws that secure the x-axis lead screw nut to the saddle. Loosen these two screws and the x-axis lead screw simply lifts out of the saddle. And that's it. The x-axis has been disassembled. Subscribe if you want to follow along. In the next video, I'll be disassembling the y-axis and removing the saddle.